Good morning, and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and I both invite and encourage you to walk with me on the road to wisdom. Good morning, y'all. Let's get to walking. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition of The Road to Wisdom. I'm your host, Andy Graham, and thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, today is uh, June the 19th, 2024. It is uh, Juneteenth. We're off today. And a lot of, a lot of the uh, jobs or, or work, my, my work is off today. I'm going to enjoy this day off, but I felt the need to talk about this topic because it's been something that has been... Um, I just been researching a whole lot, and I thought it was a very interesting topic, and I thought it was something that maybe would pique uh, your interest. Now, today's topic is going to be coming from um, some of me from the Bible, as always, and then some of it is theory. Some of it is is what scholars think and say, and some of them is what um, people that study the Bible, theologians, think. Um, so it's going to be a combination of both, um, scholars, theologians, scripture. Um, some of what I think, my opinion, is going to be a mixture of stuff. But the, the the goal of this show is for you to read it for yourself and you to to read the Bible and try to ask God for enlightenment and guidance, and then be interested to uh, to hear what you want, what you think about this. So definitely leave your comments on today's show. What you think about it? Do you believe it? Do you think there's any truth to it? Is there scripture to support what I'm going to say? What you what you think? Um, I'm going to be very interested. Like I said, I've been researching this for quite some time, and this is just a basic uh, a little dive into it, not a very deep dive, but something to get your, your appetite wet. And today's topic is, who were the Nephilim? Who were the Nephilim? Now, I asked some people, I asked a pastor that I know, uh, have you ever heard of the Nephilim? And he's like, nope, I don't know who that is. I spoke to another pastor, and I told him about the Nephilim and and what the Bible says, what research says I read online. And there's a a, a belief in some, belief not in others. I asked a good friend of mine who lived in North Carolina, and she was saying that uh, where did I where did, I think I was um, telling her about the Nephilim, and she's like, "Where'd you get that from?" And so I showed her the verse, the Bible verse in Genesis. And she's like, hmm, well, I interpret it a different way. So to me, I think it's a very interesting, it's a very good topic of discussion. So who were the Nephilim? That's the question. The Nephilim, it says in the Bible, well, it says the son of God, and the sons of God were the Nephilim. And basically what it is, a Nephilim is an offspring when one of the fallen angels slept with a woman. The child that they produce was called a Nephilim. They were very powerful. They were during the, the biblical times um, when Noah was building the ark. It says in scripture that they were before um, the ark and after the ark, or be before um, earth in those days and after the flood in those days. And I'm going to read the scripture that, that backs that up. It says, and let's read uh, in Genesis. The uh, sixth chapter, the first through the fourth verse, and it reads as follows. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, which are the Nephilim, saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal and their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were heroes of old men of renown. Now, some people say, hmm, I've never heard of that. But different Bibles call them different things. In one Bible, it may call them the sons of God. In one Bible, it would call them Nephilim. But I've in my, doing my research. I've heard that basically, like I said, and I want to reiterate this: that 
the fallen angels. What was that chose Satan? Uh, yeah, chose Satan's side in the great war. The fallen angels came on earth, saw human women. They had sex with them. And the children, their offspring, were the Nephilim. Bible doesn't say this, but it says in, in books I read and articles I read that the more powerful the angel, the stronger the Nephilim was. Sometimes they would have great powers based upon their their angelic, well, at one time angelic father in the mixture of the human blood, of, I guess, of the human DNA, depending on how strong the, the angel was, the fallen angel was, would determine how strong the Nephilim were. Um, it's also been said, I haven't, I haven't been able to connect the dots, that Goliath was a descendant of the Nephilim, or maybe even was a Nephilim, because usually they are very tall in height, very big, very strong, very powerful. And it's also was said that the Nephilim, there's stories out there, there is information that said that the Nephilim survived the, uh, the flood. And God told Noah, to uh, flood the earth or the great flood because he's going to take out uh, mankind because it was so evil and so sinful. Part of that evilness and sin was the Nephilim. The Nephilim were coming and they were mating with humans and, and at a very alarming rate, sin was taking over the earth. So God used the flood to kind of wipe the chalkboard clean, so to speak, and to start again. But there are stories out there that said the Nephilim survived it because there were parts of the earth, and this is not in the Bible. I'm just telling you that if you got there and read it and research it, according to some of these stories and information out there, that parts of the earth was not covered by the water, and the Nephilim was able to go to those parts, find those parts, and survive and wait out the 40 days or wait out however long it was to when the water started to rise to sink back down and go into the earth. Um, You want to say, like, hmm, I don't know about that, but. After the, after the flood, they say the Nephilim went to the land called Canaan. If you go back into the Bible, uh, let's see. It's Pull up for you. Okay, it says in Numbers 13, and the Lord spoke to Moses, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. For each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So Moses went to the wilderness of Paran, According to the command of the Lord, all the men who were heads of the children of Israel, and their names from the tribe of Reuben, Shemunah, the son of Zachar, the, the tribe of Simeon, Saphat, the son of Hori. Let me see. Hmm. We went down to the 31st verse it said, But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not going to go up against the people. They are far stronger than we. They gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land of, that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in men are great stature. They are then there we saw the giants. The descendants of Alak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so were we in their sight. So whew, that's in the book of Numbers, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, book of Numbers. So Canaan, according to what the Bible says, is a place where the Nephilim survived after the flood. So like I said, there's information out there. There is literature out there that say that they survived it. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm connecting some of the dots. I haven't connected all of the dots. But there were definitely beings 
of great stature, of great power throughout different books of the Bible. And these beings are, suppo are supposed and are believed to be the Nephilim, and sometimes they're called in the Bible, referred to as the sons of God. So, do you believe they were Nephilim? Who were the Nephilim? Um, it really doesn't say specifically any other explanation other than that the fallen angels made it with female humans and their offspring is called a Nephilim. Um, now, spoke to one of my pastors, a um, friend of mine, and he was telling me that angels can't reproduce. That, and he gave me a scripture. And the scripture, if you go to the book of Matthew, the 23rd, 22nd chapter, 30 verse, the 30th verse, it reads as this. We're going to read the 20, Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the 29th to the 33rd verse, that reads as this. Jesus answered, we're off based on two counts. No, let me, that's a different version. Okay, the King James Version says, Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the 30th verse, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Now that it says that the angels in heaven aren't married, but it doesn't say that they can't reproduce. It just say like in the resurrection, if we, when we die as humans and we resurrect and then we go to heaven, there won't be any marriage. That we, they will neither be married nor are given in marriage. So your husband and wife, if you're husband and wife on earth, you won't be husband and wife in heaven. Um, you'd be like the angels, and the angels aren't married. They aren't paired. They aren't com uh, companions of each other. That's in Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the 30th verse. But that doesn't say definitively that the angels can't reproduce. It just says they won't be married. So, and if you read another version, um, I'm going to read Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the 29th to the 33rd verse, and this reads as follows. It's from the Bible, the MSG version. It says, Jesus answered, you're off based on two counts. You don't know what God said, and you don't know what God, how God works. At the resurrection, we are beyond marriage, as with the angels. All our ecstasies and intimacies then will be with God. And regarding your speculation on whether the dead are raised or not, don't read your Bibles. That doesn't make sense. The grammar is clear. God says, I am not, I am, not was, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The living God defines himself as not as the God of dead men, but of the living. Hearing this exchange, the crowd was much impressed. Hmm, I'm, I'm not sure what this MSG is, but that seems a little off kilter. But the Amplified Bible said, For in the resurrection, neither do men marry nor are women given in marriage, but they are like angels in heaven who do not marry nor produce children. This comes from the Amplified Bible. So there are different translations in different Bibles. Again, Matthew 22nd, chapter 31st in the Amplified Bible says, For in the resurrection, neither do men marry nor are women given in marriage, but they are like angels in heaven who do not marry nor produce children. Hmm. The Living Translation Bible says, for when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. In this respect, they will be like the angels in heaven. So it depends on what Bible you read. It has its own interpretation. Some are, are very in line with each other. Some goes a little bit farther saying that angels can't reproduce. Angels, um, then some just say that there won't be marriage in heaven. So it's kind of like, it's, it's definitely for interpretation. Um, but the Bible clearly says the Son of God um, came down and reproduced. And people, um, scholars, a lot of books, uh, in the book of Enoch, it talks about that. Um, and I'm trying to get that book. I want to read it and talk about it here on the show as well. But the book of Enoch clearly says, talks about the Nephilim. And um, they were beings of great power. It says right here, a Nephilim are mysterious beings of, of people in the Bible who are described as being large and strong. The origins are disputed. The author of the book of Enoch viewed them as offsprings of fallen angels and humans. Others view them as descendants of Seth and Cain. So there is a definite uh, debate 
or where they came from, what they originated from. I don't know. Um, the Bible says, like I said, and I'm not trying to sound redundant, but this is something you definitely want to read for yourself. And I would definitely love to have a conversation um, back and forth with any individual that, that feels a need. That they may want to come on the show. I'll give you an invite. Just email. Well, just put in a text. You know, if you want to put the email in your text, then I can definitely send you a link. And we can set up a time where we can converse and talk about it. That would, be, that would definitely be awesome. But um, what do you think? Who are the Nephilim? Were there, ne were there Nephilim? Are they fallen angels? <clears throat> are angels really able to reproduce or not? I don't know. But these are these are particular stories that I hear about the Bible that I find interest, interesting. And I love to do research. And my research is saying that some of it sounds like it's very plausible. Some of it doesn't. But I do know that the more you read the Bible, the more you pray when you read the Bible, that God gives you enlightenment, and God gives you understanding, and God gives you uh, uh, reveals things. You that the Bible just read a simple text alone um, just won't just won't reveal to you. So, the more you read the Bible, I hope this is a challenge for those who find this topic interesting to read the Bible. I'm definitely going to try and read the Bible and find out as much as I can. Um, about this. Uh, like I said, I think it's very interesting. I just want to discuss this briefly this morning. And I hope that this causes individuals that read it, that I mean, that watch this show to read for themselves and get more in depth with the Bible. So uh, tell me in, in the comments, Nephilim, no Nephilim. Angels can reproduce, they can't reproduce. You, you ask me those questions. So sometime in life, there's going to be individuals that cross your path. They're going to say some things that you, it's probably going to be considered considered in your mind blasphemous, disrespectful. Like, what are they talking about? What, what, who, who taught them about God? Where, who, who has influenced them and turned them off so much? They talk in such a disrespectful and blasphemous and sacrilegious tone about God in the Bible. You're just going to shake your head like, I'm going to pray for you. You're going to say that to yourself. I'm going to pray for you whoever these individuals are that you hear saying some of this crazy stuff that's being said. But whenever you get a chance to talk or you come across somebody and you won't feel the need or felt that God led you to say something, you tell individuals things like this. I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written down by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report to us supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. That comes from Pastor Vody Bakum. Check him out on YouTube. Now, if this is the first time you ever see me on this platform, I'm going to ask you to do a few things for me. First thing, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow the channel. I can only do that with your help. Two, please hit the notification bell because I don't want you to miss any material that I upload in the future. Three, hit that like button that helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And the algorithm basically is you type in my name, Danny Graham, when you type in the road to wisdom, it will help you find my particular channel much faster. Fourth thing I want you to do is leave a comment. Your comments are very important to me because they let me know whether or not you agree with what I'm saying. If you want to give me some encouragement, if you want to give me some constructive criticism, if you want to say, Hey, I want you to talk about this topic or Hey, I, I heard you this morning. And it was very good. Talk about this or think about that. Leave a comment. I definitely appreciate any comment that you take time out of your busy schedule to leave for me. Um, also, share this video. Share this video with everybody. Your friends, families, brothers, sister, mother, daddy, grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle, co-worker. It doesn't matter. I'm trying to spread the word. I'm trying to spread God's word. I'm trying to give inspiration for people to pick up the Bible and read. Also, last but not least, watch my video from the start to the finish. That also helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. In life, sometimes you're going to feel frustrated. You're going to feel tired. You're going to feel beaten down. But that's when you keep, keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep depending on God. Keep your hand in God's hand. Keep your, your mind in God's doctrine and God's word. And just pray. Prayer is our slingshot. The same way David used a slingshot to kill Goliath, we, prayer is our slingshot to defeat all the evilness that's going on in this world, all the problems, all the trials, all the tribulations. 
prayer is our slingshot. And you can load your slingshot with all different stuff. The same way David picked up those stones and put in his bag, your stones that you can put in your prayer slingshot is obedience, faithfulness, discipline, caring, love, respect. You can load your bag up with all different kinds of things the same way David loaded his bag up. So just make sure that you pray each and every day that God makes you the best version that you can possibly be. Now, some of us haven't had a conversation with God in a very long time. It's been a month. It's been a year. It's been a decade. It's been two or three, four, five, six decades. And you say, and you use, and you use as an excuse, well, I don't know how to pray, or God's not going to listen. That's not true. God wants to be very intimate with you. God wants to hear from you. All you got to do is say, God, please help me. I want to be a better person. I want to confess to you that you are my Lord and Savior. It's as simple as that. Start off with that, and your relationship with God will continue to grow. But you have to make the first step. You got to make a step. You got to make an effort. Not a half, but effort. But you got to make an effort. A sincere effort of confession, repentance to God. And that's the first step in you going to your heavenly home. Now, if you haven't heard, if you haven't talked to God, He would love, I know He would love to hear from you. Make sure you talk to Him today. So I'll be back on Friday, Friday, which will be June the 21st. 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here. Same bat time, same bat channel. Hope that you all that are off enjoy your day off. Enjoy this Juneteenth. And until Friday, you have a fantastic day. And God bless you.